made it. We are in Lisbon. We are at the Web Summit and we are here for the first time. Here is the arena. When we've got here at the airport, we've picked up our media accreditation. So it was really easy and smooth. And right now we are ready for the opening. I've just checked everything on the app. They have a really cool app. They have all the schedule there and we can choose where we want to go and what we want to see on each day. Every day is really packed. We have like a really full schedule. Yeah, you can choose different speakers you want to see, uh, different subjects. They have subjects like communications, technology, social media. <laughs> He's supposed to be here to help me filming this, but as you can see, everything is really simple. There are basically four days, four full days. And for today we want to see the opening and we are going at a web summit night we will meet really nice people from the industry or creative people that are here like us but now we are here for the first speech and I don't know we will see I have no idea what to expect because we are here for the first time at the same time I want to show you this beautiful sunset My husband, as you know, and with the passes here are the passes, media pass for you, media pass for me, and the media guy. And he's supposed to be filming me. And as you can see, my hand is shaking. Already. What I'm saying is good to be in the sun, <laughs> okay? So let's get going. The arena is just behind me, and I'm gonna get in and we will go to the central stage that is the main stage of the event. All right, so we are inside the media village. This is the area where all the speakers are getting ready. These are all the journalists from the entire world that are present here. You can see people from BBC and big news channels that are here and they are all editing here. Everyone is prepping the press materials. the arena looks like and you will have a short sneak peek like a panoramic view of the entire event Instead, they begin watching everyone, everywhere. Danielle, uh, Michelle, you have to, you have to allow me this. Make some noise, Matt Summit! Yeah, thank you. It was a dream come true. Is that for Eurovision? Yes, of course. Heather, for the chairman of Wildlife, Rob Payne. Thank you. Today, I want to talk to you about why TV presents a golden opportunity for our entire industry is 5G Plus X will create a smart new era. The first day was a short day. The first day was a really short day, it was just the opening, so we've got time to see the surroundings and tomorrow we will start a new day. Uh, really early but first we wanted to eat something really quick and this place seemed to be perfect for a late dinner the soup was great but unfortunately we weren't really happy with the second course so we can't recommend you this restaurant if you're coming to the web summit even if it's really really close to the arena don't worry though we found plenty of spots with great food in Lisbon Morning. morning we are we are a bit late today but at least we are here it's a long long day guys so um, we are starting the second day with a speech in the pavilion area yesterday we 
we've been only to the central stage. Right now we will see all the corners, all the brands that are present here. So I think it's gonna be a really massive event. Let's go. <laughs> Speakers all over the place. This place is actually huge. So this is the last pavilion, the one we were looking for. Let's get it. And since it's based on data. With robotics, imagine walls that can actually move. Imagine the bed that can actually be taken out when you don't need it anymore. For small spaces, this is very powerful. Right, and the reason why we do this kind of thing is because technology is also revolutionizing the economics of content creation. So our ability to invest more on the screen uh, and get a greater return in contact with you can get into so many people who are leaving now. which means it's the lunch break and the next speaker is one of his favorites <laughs> The ambassador of Tech Ball. Yeah. Tech Ball, como você pode passar isso para crianças em outra modalidade? Né, tem toda a possibilidade de me conquistar essa Libertadores. Some of the biggest stars in the world, like uh, Ronaldo. Okay. Você pode chutar agora aí para para alguém na plateia. <laughs> utilizing powerful AI to process your data, enabling early detection of potential health issues, and connecting to your doctor instantly. This foundation prepares us for the third phase of innovation into the home. So, what's next? Experience. Experiences are so important that entire industries are reinventing themselves to meet this demand. And I really believe that technology in the home is ready to undergo its own reinvention, whipping up intelligent food playlists weekly and delivering ingredients and meal kits that can quickly and easily be delivered right to your door. In fact, by 2025, the global meal kit delivery service market is expected to reach nearly $9 billion. We can turn every house into a truly smart home. But at the same time, you're, you're expanding the range of things that you do. It's like really it's about how do we use technology with an innovation, both in terms of gaining efficiency. So how do we become the most efficient and profitable business with regards to using technology and automation? But also the platform story that I was talking about, how do we build long-term user retention, long-term user engagement, because we have people who offer this industry. Um, you were saying that you actually were had a lot of health issues in the in in the last year, um, and that kind of led you to want to create some of the company you're creating. I think the need came from. 
I was doing what most of us do, pushing very hard. We want things, whether it's a better life for our family, or we want a different house, or a bigger house, or a different car, to do this. So we push our bodies, right? I've been pushing my body for so many years, and being on a television show is an immense amount of work. I was flying 90 flights a year. Um, I built six companies within the span of probably four or five years, plus a foundation, then having a family, raising a child, and it all hit me like a ton of bricks. When I ended up in the hospital with pulmonary emboli, and I was told I had between about 12 to 24 hours left to live. It was a big wake-up call at 39, then immediately following that to sort of go into pre-cardiac arrest. The idea is, is that whatever socioeconomic part of the ladder you're on, we're all pushing our bodies. I wanted to design something to feed the body, feed the adrenals, feed the brain, but create a connection, just like what you said. Build a connection between the user of, it's a drinks product, it's, um, it's a functional drink, but it's, a, it's adaptogens, it's vitamins, it's brain stimulants, it's things that actually feed you throughout the day, but create a, connect, a connection between you and your body, which a lot of brands have a lot of trouble doing. But as an influencer or an actor, I can sort of cut through the BS and talk to people because I don't have a level of corporate governance that I have to sort of live within the means or the confines of. So the company's called Immortal Rituals. Immortal came from the idea of vampire, which <laughs> we do want to live longer. That's why we want to take care of ourselves. But it's hard in this economic way because we, we push. So that's the idea. Creating connection between a user, a customer, a person, and what they're putting into their body. And I am very excited to, to launch this. Um, and, you know, not to sound like a capitalist pig, but I want my company to become a multinational, multi-billion dollar corporation because then I get to invest in the things that mean things to me. You know, we have the idea, we talk about sustainability. What is sustainability? Well, if sustainability is keeping up with the status quo, we have to redefine what sustainability is. And I think we need to move into what's called regeneration. Regener regenerative farming practices, regenerative living practices. So the companies with triple bottom lines are the ones that are going to sustain the future. Triple bottom line meaning people, planet, profit. Happier, healthier people build happier, healthier societies. Creating videos for TikTok is just uh, a bit of fun, really. Um, I think a lot of people just use it for a bit of escapism from... I think TikTok struck an interesting balance, you know, in terms of creating sort of the forcing function for creators to think about themes to, to, to make videos around. You can swipe into so many video experiences so quickly. You know, I, I, I don't actually know this for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if their product development team were tracking a metric in terms of how quickly you can get to the next video with their user interface, right? That would have been very, very clever. And I don't think you really see that anywhere else. I mean, Instagram Stories is, is starting to get kind of closer to that, but it's definitely focused on frequency of new video experience. And I think this, this whole approach is why, you know, companies like TikTok are gonna crush big media, you know, in, particularly in the West, that have a TV DNA, because it is so far removed from the basis or the basics of sort of TV programming, even sort of Netflix curation. Like, it's just looking at sort of night and day here. Okay, right now we are trying to figure it out where exactly is the last stage and we have the map exactly on the Web Summit app. We are looking for the pavilion free. Combine it with the most downsized combustion engine that we have. Uh, and he came up with the Koenigsegg Barrett Drive system. And that's a wrap for today. We are going downtown. <laughs> so we are ready for the Web Summit tonight.
like PR content creators, digital media and so on. And later on we will see the Sophia. robot Sophia. So yeah, that will be interesting. Can we still build a personal brand on YouTube in 2020? 2020 is going to be the watershed year for being able to build influencers building brands primarily on YouTube. Isn't that insane? And the third area is, of course, artificial intelligence. Yeah, it's all about making cool stuff. It's about uh, delivery. Uh, so, it really is no longer about the message that you're trying to. No one, no one cares about your message. No one cares about what you're trying to say to them. No one cares about your pitch. Everyone's trying to pitch to you every day on the internet. But what we found is. The brands that work really well, the ones that do 100x, 1000x what they do on social, in gifts is because they're, they're just expressing their personality online. They're not trying to pitch you. you don't, in six seconds, you don't have enough time to pitch. But it's just really about your brand message. What are you really about? What's your personality across? This is a really nice goal. I like content marketing is like the first date. If you want to get the talk by yourself, you get one your second. So like say for the Volvo example, the EU run a piece around the same these features. So the personal story is much more effective. And this is how another day goes by at Web Summit. And here is our favorite ride in Lisbon. But what comes next is our best night in this city. 
first we found this lovely Italian restaurant in the heart of Lisbon. We totally recommend you this truffle cheese pasta. It's not only spectacular but it's really delicious as well. Thank you. And the Portuguese wine, we have no words. <laughs> And after the best dinner here, we've also got the best night out. It's no wonder that we were so exhausted in the next morning at the final summit day. really executing influencer strategies correctly and aligning their brand uh, equity, their brand purpose with the editorial strategy of those brilliant creators are the brands that are winning. So what are the brand values that we can give our consumers that allow them to then go and advocate on our behalf? And that can only be done if we're really authentic about what's true to us and what our brand purpose is, as you said. But then also that we have to be comfortable with moving out of this sort of broadcast luxury behavior into that slightly more collaborative, empowered advocacy model. So we are done with the first part of the day. We are going to the lunch. I can say that today was my favorite day so far because I've seen a lot of talks with marketing and PR and I will insert here my favorite conversation in the next minute. So you will see what I'm talking about. I've been working for the H&M Group for the past decade with sustainability. And I thought I would actually walk you through this with the help of a pair of trousers. So this is a pair of denim clothes that are actually made partly with recycled cotton, meaning that we already at this stage can get out almost 20% of both chemical and water use. If we look at the supply chain and our suppliers, we can already now see some promising developments, both in terms of reduced energy and also the suppliers transitioning quicker into renewable. Now, garment collecting is only one of the solutions to close the loop for fashion. We are also exploring new types of circular business model with the aim to make the products get more and longer lives. And I think the area where you really see it at the moment is in plastic. So we had Blue Planet. I, I guess you guys have heard of the Blue Planet effect. Huge in the UK, but I think we've seen it everywhere. Our consumers were really mindful of the single-use packaging that they're using. We've really seen that. It's an uproar, which is actually the correct answer. Very good. Not to be confused with a hand-down moment. You guys obviously know that. I should say, Catherine Lee. And then we also have the more serious guy, the Vice President of Global Marketing, the absolute. As for me, I, I just wanted to impress the girls in my class. Like, I thought this would be a cool way to get into like, the music. Influence is really challenging to think about what does that look like? We are going to the final ceremony at the central stage and that's it! I think it's the first time when we have time to actually sit down and talk to you because today it was a really chaotic day. I think today was my favorite 
day because there were plenty of speeches and a lot of panels that were really interesting to me as a content creator. Uh, there were a lot of topics like digital marketing, advertising, everything that is important for someone that is creating content in our days. So yeah, I think this type of discussions can make you realize that doing videos daily or weekly is more important than you think, than, than you realize. I think it's something that it's going to be huge in the future, at least this is what I've understood listening the panels here. Right now it's 4.33, we are on the 7th of November, which means it's the last day of Web Summit. It was a really, really nice experience for me and I really hope that I will be back here the next year because I feel like you can learn a lot of things. Yeah, you can see the trends, you can see the people that are important in your field if you are interested in technology, digital marketing. If you are working in any of these domains, you will find some interesting things to see and to learn here at the Web Summit. Yeah, right now we are getting ready to go inside the Alti Sarena and after that we are going to pick up our luggage and we are heading straight to the airport because we have checked our luggage here today is our last day in Portugal it was a really really nice experience and other than this web summit vlog I think I will have a vlog with Portugal and this fun experience so you have to check that out I will insert the link here when we are talking about it. Hopefully I will have time to post two vlogs from, from this place because it was a really, really, really nice place. Yeah. Do you agree? I agree. It makes me cry. <laughs> okay, so let's go inside and let's see the last minute of Web Summit. I see no limits as to how artificial intelligence can support what we want to do as humans. Uh, take climate change. I think we can be much more effective in fighting climate change if we use artificial intelligence. I think we can spare people for, you know, awful stress. To the city of Lisbon and the country of Portugal and all the people of the world, I'd like to welcome to the stage the president of Portugal. the future. We are unstoppable. Nobody will stop us. Nobody.